entrepreneur in the middle of a, the world pandemic where everybody is wondering what they should be doing with their life and their business. Right. And you decide to start a business. Yeah. Which is <laughs> why not? At my core, why I want to talk to you. Like that <laughs> is, I want to know who is this woman and what is she thinking and what is she putting in her coffee in the morning? Yeah. Because we need to talk. So that's yeah. really why or why I wanted to, to chat with you. And I'm so grateful you Thank took the time. You. Absolutely. Thank you. I'm excited to chat with you. Yeah. First, introduce yourself if you would, but sure. then tell me a little bit about what, not even what you do, but what sparked this thing of starting something now. Sure. Sure. So my name is Janelle Coltre. I'm a Sonoma County native, born and raised. Um, I went to Santa Rosa Junior College, Sonoma State University, and then I went overseas for graduate school. Um, and I lovingly and endearingly like to say Sonoma County is a little bit like a black hole. No matter how many times you try and leave, it just sucks you right back in and you realize how wonderful a place it is and you can't get anything like it. So um, the concept for Sonoma County Concierge um, started sooner, probably prior before actual launching. Um, but the reason it, it felt like a good fit and a good time to start is I have always been the super type A personality control freak, um, even in college. And I say that with love. <laughs> that is not a harsh judgment of self. I am proud to call myself a control freak. And in college, I was always, you know, the designated driver or the one planning where we would be going. And then fast forward a few years to, you know, my late 20s, I was the designated driver again for a couple of girlfriends to an event in Napa and I put a little goodie bag together for them so I got like reusable sparkly cups and I got chips and waters and you know just fun things and my friends just loved it they thought it was great they were able to enjoy the the event and you know have fun doing it on the way there you know in the transportation there and on the way back and then about a year and a half to two years ago my husband and i were visiting his grandmother in portland and we decided to do an experience via airbnb that we literally just took a train and met this uh, lovely older gentleman in his like toyota corolla <laughs> a very small unassuming vehicle and one other gal and he basically just drove us around in the Willamette Valley to different tasting rooms. And that's kind of all he did. Like he gave us a little bit of history of the area, but it really was just a DD. And so I told my husband, I'm like, man, you know, I know Sonoma County really well. Um, I love the community that it is. I love all that it has to offer. I love meeting people from all walks of life. I have been really blessed to have a very colorful career path. So I've done things from working in cosmetics to working for the United States Coast Guard and everything in between. So we literally, it was, I know the exact date. Um, my husband and I have a date night every Wednesday and we have been together over six and a half years. And so it was our date night on August 5th. And we just started talking about it. I was like, you know what? I have a great new little, you know, mid sized SUV, I could totally do this. And then the next day, Sonoma County Concierge was born. <laughs> so, that's, that's so fun. It's really, it sounds like it was a spontaneous decision, right? Totally. Yeah. Um, you, uh, you, you kind of just put a couple of things together. It sounded like a puzzle piece that kind of came together in your mind. Out of your love for Sonoma County, you uh you're doing this and from a personal experience with somebody else and i don't want to put words in anybody's mouth but isn't it is it it sounds to me like you you had an experience that was pleasant and good but while you were having that experience you were also thinking about how you might want to make it better yes absolutely he was wonderful and we had a great experience but I just knew that my personality type, I could just kind of throw some glitter on it <laughs> and, you know, zhuzh it up a little bit. And, you know, I knew with wine tasting since COVID has happened, you know, everyone has to have a reservation to go wine tasting. And it can be a little cumbersome to plan an entire day of tastings because especially if you're not from the area, if you're a Sonoma County local, 
you have a better idea, a little bit of timing in terms of how long it's going to take to get from point A winery to point B winery. But if you're someone coming up from the Bay Area or just from out of town in general, you don't necessarily know that Forestville is nowhere near, you know, the north end of Healdsburg. You know what I mean? And there's going to be a drive time in between. So I just wanted to take the guesswork out of it for everyone and, and curate a really wonderful uh, relationship with a lot of different businesses in the area to support them as well. I love that. And I think that that's one of the, one of the most critical things right now as business owners. Our dynamic has changed in how we in engage with one another and how we get to interact with one another. And I think a lot of business owners are really scared to reinvent um, and innovate how the communication works. I think that a lot of times clients that I work with are a little bit overwhelmed and perplexed by the technology and by the limitations that technology offers but also these circumstances are bringing and it sounds like you're you've you've really found sort of a way to navigate through the limitations and use technology and use your own sort of passion for the for the area and for the experience of your customer to create relationship so i want to i want to hear more about that really curious how you curate the word you use is curate relationships with both business owners and wineries, but also your customer, your client. Absolutely. My primary goal is to support these locally small, you know, boutique type businesses, mom and pops. My parents uh, are the most amazing people in the world. They had their own actual careers, both working in a government sector, but they've had an antique business since I was about five years old. And so they have been in a very prevalent antique store here in Sonoma County for the majority of my life. And that is still mom and pop at its core. It's literally my mother and father in an antique store. And so that's really what uh, sparked my passion for that. So the way that I have found the specific venues that I want to work with is I will kind of stalk them a little bit on Instagram. I'll check out their website, their social media, see their kind of engagement. If it's something that is a 25,000 follower unit, they're probably something that's a little bit bigger <laughs> than what I'm looking for. If the smaller, you know, you can tell they're still trying to grow as well. And then I reach out to them either via Instagram a direct message or an email and just say, hi, you know, I introduced myself. I would love to partner with you. May I please send you an email with more information about who I am and what I do and see if it's something that would work for your business. Because that's the main thing, right? You want to make sure that what they're going to be offering my guest, which is a little bit uh, elevated in comparison to someone off the street walking into their tasting room. I want to make sure that at the end of the day, they are making a profit. And then the way that I engage with my clients, so I'm really working hard on building my social media presence. I found that that is more my uh, target demographic is that I kind of call it the wealthy elder millennial. <laughs> yeah. uh, wealthy <laughs> elder millennial. I feel yeah. like I'm, just, I'm, I'm like just missed that part. I think this is just the elder part. <laughs> So I can't, I can't take credit. There's a fantastic comedian. Her name is Eliza Schlesinger and she has a wonderful stand-up called Elder Millennial. And it is hilarious because she is maybe a year or two older than myself. And it's exactly the exact demographic. You know, these are folks who are now becoming more of a mid to senior level in their careers. They have a little bit more, you know, disposable income. They may have a small family that they've started because I want it to be something that like my kind of slogan is luxury experiences with a local feel. And I, I, I know the community you're talking about. She is hysterical. She's really yes. fun. It's so fun to me to hear you talk about the pieces that are coming together for you and what you're looking at, where your market research is, <laughs> because it's, all, it's, it's so interesting to see what sparks creativity in a person who starts their own business, because it's a little bit like standing at the, at the edge of something and taking a plunge. Right. Um, and I'm not, you know, I'm not a big um, athletic person and I've never jumped off of off a rock. I think that there's nothing really more uh, terrifying 
I know that that's not true. One time I did that. But, uh, but when you do, when you're standing at the edge, all kinds of things come to your mind and all yeah. your fears just kind of rush in. So to be really prepared to, to know what it is you're doing and why you're doing what you're doing and what the experiences that you want to create um, helps with, the, with that adrenaline and helps with that, uh, with that plunge. I want to reach back to something you said because it's something I feel very strongly about and mentioned it. You know, social media is such a beast and uh, it entrepreneurs is. who are starting in their business, we always think that the goal is to have more followers and, mm -hmm. and build our social media presence and almost get like, you know, Insta famous. That's a thing, right? Right. right. Yeah. And so you're, you're filtering and you're creating a ton of content and you're oh, constantly yeah. putting stuff out there like me too. I'm so there with you, yeah. but it's really about the relationships that you're building. And Absolutely. so you were mentioning how you are choosing the partners who are maybe not as well known on Instagram. Right. Why are you going that direction? And what, what about that feels like it's working for you? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I really believe in collaboration. Um, I think it's a mentality of, um, yeah, there's enough to kind of go around for everyone. But yeah, you know, I really think it's important to collaborate with one another because it, it really takes a village and it's not going to take away from my followers or my community that I'm building. It's only, go we're only going to help each other's, right? It's just more experience. And I think it also gives validity to someone's business as well as breeds trustworthiness for their organization and for mine. If they're seeing that we're working together and that we're supporting one another, I think that, um, I call them guests. My customers are called guests. I feel that guests will appreciate that it's not every man out for themselves. It's a community and it's uplifting each other because we all need those different elements to make Sonoma County what it really is. I've always said there's no such thing as six degrees of separation in Sonoma County. It's like two and a half. So yeah. you know what I mean? And it's, so interesting as you build that following on Instagram, how many people you either already are mutually connected to, or they're connected to one other person that you're already connected to. And I really think that's what it's all about is just lifting each other up collectively because in the long run, that's, that's going to help us all. I love that. I think, um, you know, I'm not from Sonoma County. I'm, I'm, I'm a total transplant here and I chose this area um, when my, my girls were really small and I wanted them to grow up in a place that would remind me of home and home to me is Europe. And so I, I just wanted them to have this familial feel, live yes. in a city that is small and close to a larger city and also has this sort of, this, this, this rich agricultural this space for growth and I think that for us that sort of farm to table thing um, for us that was something that is just so new to, to, to speak out right because it's part of our everyday life every single thing yeah. we do no matter whether you live close to a farm or on the farm is generated by people who work with their hands and and make things that we can enjoy and build an experience around and Sonoma County talks about that uh, Sonoma County tourism speaks of the, the there's room at the table right another another seat at the table and I love that so much because it points to the community so I'm curious though in starting a business and i have to be honest with you you said august 5th is your is the day where you just kind of went for it i'm curious because june july august for me were really really long months mm -hmm. uh, and there were months where i was really thinking about um you know how can i how can i serve my clients even better how can i squeeze more time out of my already really full day mm -hmm. um and 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 working with people who are like i'm not sure i'm going to be in business much less start right. a business <laughs> so yeah. so there there is this certain fire and spark right mm -hmm. inside of you you call it glitter which i love <laughs> <laughs> throw glitter and judge it i love that yeah. um, what 
what is that in you? Like, what is, what gets you going? What keeps you going? What's your vision here? I feel like my vision changes regularly. <laughs> I feel like different seasons of life, you have different visions of what you want out of your life. My main cornerstones of my mission, first and foremost, is to support local small businesses. That is the whole reason that I started this. Um, and I really credit that to my parents putting a love of supporting as local as possible in me from the time that I was a child. Like I said, I, I grew up here. I danced ballet for almost 15 years here. Um, you know, so that's just been a part of my essence since I was a kid. I was heavily involved in the churches I grew up in and saw how much good that they do for the community. I did a lot of community outreach as a kid and, and even into adult. And I just see the benefit of what small local businesses can do because they have that same passion for the community. Um, the other thing that really made me want to do this is kind of my second pillar of I'm wanting to keep people safe and off the road when they're drinking. My mother was in a life-altering car accident back in 2016 uh, with a drunk driver. She shattered her nose, had a horrible concussion. There were multiple other vehicles involved because of this drunk driver. And I just, I want people safe. I want them off the road. I want you to have fun, but I don't want you to get behind the wheel of a car. It's just not worth it for you and for everyone around you when you are driving that vehicle. And then lastly, my third pillar is I want to bring joy to people's lives. I think that we have such, there's so much going on. There's so much turmoil all the time in this world that it means so much to me to be able to make someone smile because I believe it's a complete ripple effect. If I'm able to bless someone on their day, if that changes the trajectory of their mood or the trajectory of their, their afternoon, that's then going to ripple to the people that they then interact with. And that's really my main, you know, what kind of gets me going of wanting to do this is that I really just want people to enjoy life. I don't dismiss what people are going through. It's been hard. It's been, I can't tell you how many times I have cried in these past six months and I'm not even a crier. Yes. I have had ugly cry breakdown moments yeah. these past few months. And I just feel like, you know, once things were opening back up and people were able to come back out and wine taste, you know, safely, I just saw how much of a relief and a release it was for people, especially people from San Francisco, Oakland, you know, that are super cooped up and they don't have a gorgeous backyard or a park right down the street, you know. I just saw how, I just saw the stress kind of melt away from them when they were able to wine taste. And that's really what I want to do is just, I want people to feel like they know that they have a great place in Sonoma County to enjoy and just to feel happy. I, I love that so much. And you know, you, you are talking about finding the silver lining, right? And I think that there is, there are so many challenges in life. And I think this, this, this global crisis and everything that's going on in the world, yeah. it kind of feels um, a little bit like um, like a sticky mess. Like it's, it's yeah. you know, you can get really caught up in it. And I so appreciate this about business owners and women entrepreneurs are, are brilliant at this. We find that silver lining. We, you know, we're not just throwing glitter at things that are messy and sticky and calling it pretty. Right. We're really trying to find a, the purpose and the intentionality behind what it is that's happening and how we can have impact and how we can learn from what is going on. And I really hear that in you, which I, I love so much. And I think that's what inspires people, right? Mm -hmm. It's not just the pretty Instagram post and the lovely video and another little boomerang happening or now it's TikTok, right? <laughs> Which I not, this is how I know I'm an elder millennial because I do not understand TikTok for the life uh, of me. Yes, yes. <laughs> so to all of those business owners that have figured it out because I'm like, I don't, mm -mm, what is that? I don't know. <laughs> I give you about 90 days. You're going to be on it. I know you will. <laughs> 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 but it's to find, you know, to find that, that silver lining and to go for it anyway, because there's no guarantees, uh, with, with a startup, especially forget it. Um, 
uh, under any circumstances, right? Um, but to, to find the reason why you're wanting to do uh, what you're doing and who you're serving. And I heard you say that that support, uh, supporting local businesses, supporting our community. And that business is, our work is, an, is, a, is a human right. It's like an integral part of what we do and why we do what we're doing. And safety, right? Support, safety, and then joy. You mentioned joy, like who wants anything more in these times than joy? How do you stay motivated and encouraged during this time? Oh, I have to give a lot of credit to my husband. He is definitely my my best friend and my biggest cheerleader for sure. I'm incredibly blessed, and um, you know, it's it may sound incredibly cliche, but it's very true for me. You know, I am a believer in Jesus Christ, and He has been my Lord and Savior my whole life. So that's really what's kept me going. I've 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 gone through a lot of trials in my life where joy was not present <laughs> at all. And it also made me really realize that you aren't guaranteed every day. You're, you're just not, you know, my mom coming home from work, just a random winter, December evening, driving home. And, you know, the next thing we know, we're getting rushed. She's getting rushed in the ambulance to a hospital and I'm getting a phone call from my frantic father. So you're not guaranteed every day. And I think that's really what keeps me going is that I love to enjoy life. I lovingly call myself a fat kid and I don't say that in a derogatory way. I say that because I love food. That's very much that kind of European lifestyle as well. You have to enjoy the beautiful things in life. If it's a, a flower in your yard or a delicious, you know, sheep cheese that you can find at Oliver's Market that is, you know, this much for like $20. It's fine. Eat it. It's delicious. <laughs> you know, enjoying beautiful wines and then listening to the winemakers who talk about it like they're talking about a lover. And I'm so excited to be also partnering with local distilleries as well. That's a whole new blessing to Sonoma County. I mean, these distilleries, it feels so bad for them because they got this launch and then they just got slammed with COVID and haven't been able to have the general public, but they're supplying majority of Sonoma County with hand sanitizer. <laughs> you know what I mean? Talk about a, an immediate pivot. And so that's really, it, it's just that, that joy and, and that desire to help people enjoy the nice things in life. And the finer things in life don't necessarily have to have a big price tag on them. They can be found in your backyard with your crazy dog who's barking up a storm at the landscapers. But that's, you know, that's really what just keeps me going. I, I know how blessed I am and I want everyone else to realize how blessed they are too. You know, Janelle, when you are talking, it's so beautiful because you're talking about a sort of like a a variety of ways of experiencing life. You were talking about the, you know, $20 an ounce of cheese conversation. Oh, I'm so there for it. Yeah. Um, and you really have to want to appreciate that, you know, yeah. um, and, and then you're also talking about just any, any, any old experience where, where you were maybe just in a conversation with somebody you were talking about the the, the winemakers and I'm, I, I just instantly got a memory. This is many, many years ago and it was one of our very first summers in Sonoma County. Maybe my girls were so little and they maybe the second summer or third summer in Sonoma County and I had heard um, out in Dry Creek Valley, um, a friend of ours, we went with our small group to a winery and a friend of ours was giving a sermon really but not it yeah, was a, a sermon, spiritual sermon <laughs> but it was about bees and oh. and, okay. and and the fruit of the land and mm -hmm. that rejuvenating of our soul when we connect to what is around us and I always think of the hands. I always think of nothing comes from nothing, right? Um, so that the hands of the people that wake up in the morning and make themselves a cup of coffee and go out there and even with technology and machinery and, and all the all the wonderful things we get to take advantage of in our day and age, mm -hmm. there still is this craft 
-hmm. that is part of what they do and to be a concierge of that experience for your guests i want to be a guest like (laughs) would love to have you absolutely (laughs) because it's so beautiful and so uh so grounding, I think, for, for people to have that experience. Right. And, and you know, it's sometimes when you go on a tasting experience as, as a, a customer, as a guest, you may not have the gumption to say, hey, is your winemaker around? Or, hey, can I talk to the, you know, the tasting room manager and get all the details? And what's nice is I am have no problem being obnoxious and reaching out to <laughs> people. <laughs> you know, I, it's, Part of what I love to do is like, hey, let me know if the winemaker is going to be around or, hey, let me know if, you know, your sommelier is going to be available that day. Um, I know my guests would love that. And that's part of what comes with my experience. It's not just me driving you around. It's also you're getting specific experiences that, like I said, someone who just has never heard of that tasting room and they show up, they're not receiving that same special treatment. And I think that it's, what helps people fall in love with the variety of, you know, offerings that we have here in Sonoma County, whether that be wine, spirits, of course, we have amazing craft breweries here as well. And who knows, I mean, I might end up expanding it. And if there's restaurants that want to get involved and say, hey, we want to do a, a experience where we do special, you know, bites, great, I'm all for it. I think it's great. That right now is what I do with what I like to call my VIP vendors. So I have a lot of local businesses that are not wineries or distilleries that still want to give my guests a little something extra. So it might be a dollar or a percentage off, or it might be an added value, but I'm ranging in the categories as to what I'm offering. I mean, it goes from lashes to restaurants to clothing boutiques to home store boutiques to um, you know elixirs and cocktail mixers and all of these are locally owned small businesses and the majority of them I'm proud to say are also woman owned Um, I think there's just something so powerful about a tribe of women and I, I hesitate using the word tribe because I feel like it can be so Um, overplayed sometimes, but there is a lot of value in what it means to be a tribe. And I think when you have that element, it just, it it compounds upon itself. I think women, women lifting each other up is vital to the well-being of all of us. Um, I couldn't agree with you more. And as a mother of two young uh, women, it was about five years ago now that I decided to bring my business local because of that idea. You know, I was noticing that a lot of people are saying, you know, it's nearly impossible to live in Sonoma County. And over the last three years, unfortunately, that that sentiment seems to just be increasing. But I want them to to see that there is there's so much here to do. Yeah. And that there's a lot of ways to, you know, contribute to our community and to do really good work. Mm-hmm. And that it takes one another, right? That the, we, none of us are in business in a vacuum. And, you know, that's really why, why I felt so, it piqued my interest so much to hear that you started the business during this during this crisis because I do think that we talk about it so much and we talk about how hard things are so much and they are um but we're going to get through this and I I just remember growing up I grew up in a communist country and um I remember this is something that during this time has has, um just been brought back to my memory Mm -hmm. that during the civil uh unrest and during just this really difficult time for our country at the time. Um, my grandmother, which was happening during a winter, incidentally, my grandmother created beautiful, you know, crepe um, paper flowers and took them to the market and people still bought yeah. flowers. You know, people still wanted beautiful things. And mm-hmm. she's a sort of like reinvented herself a little bit. And I'll never forget that, that even in the midst of really hard things, mm-hmm. there's ways to get through and to lift each other up. So I so admire your, just your spirit and your, your willingness to take a chance because there's no guarantees, right? 
and to do hard work and to be an interconnector in our community. I think that that's so beautiful. So I, I'm curious about like, how can we work with you? I know that like I know that others outsiders, <laughs> you know, or the people who are not familiar with Sonoma County can hire you. Uh, right. But what about what about our community? Like, what about people here, elder millennials or not? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> how can we work with you? How can we uh, how we, how can we connect with you? Absolutely. Well, you the easiest way so you can find the most information is obviously finding me on Instagram because you can see all of the beautiful photos of the different. Uh, wineries that I partner mm -hmm. with, as well as the other businesses. My website, SonomaCountyConcierge.com, explains how the entire process works from step one of you picking a region to all the way down to me just picking you up at your preferred guest lodging location. If you're a Sonoma County local and you love to wine taste, please consider hiring Sonoma County Concierge because it allows you to have a stress-free day. And like I said, it allows you to sip, sit back, and relax and you can enjoy it and it'll be a wonderful day and I can be as involved or disconnected as you want during the transportation so we can all sing along and dance to some you know early 2000s hip-hop because that's my jam or <laughs> I can pretend that there's a wall in between us and you have complete privacy I have done both so <laughs> and everything in between yeah yeah um great that's great I may just call you like on a random Wednesday yeah. <laughs> And ask if you're available for a for a wine tasting. That that's so fun. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk with us, and I hope that the listeners are just seeing just your your spark and your your light and your your. This, there's this word. It's a it's a Yiddish word. Just the the chutzpah, right? Like, <laughs> oh, that, like just your 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 zeal and your um energy for life and for seeing things get better i i really appreciate that um so much um i appreciate you taking the time to chat with me thank you so much for reaching out and for this opportunity i so admire what you do and you know the the connector that you are with individuals and and the brand that you have built for yourself it's really yeah. awesome. thank you i really love my work and i think it helps i always remind myself that we're ambassadors, right? right? And really that's what you're talking about. You're an ambassador of other business businesses, um, their craft, our community. Um, I think that that is so valuable uh, and so special and, and such a big job. So uh, be kind to yourself, ask for help if you need it. Thank you so much for taking a chance um, to do the work that you're wanting to do. And I'm, I just, my, my, all my, all my thoughts and all my prayers to you. And I'm so, I meant to ask you what your husband's reaction was on date night on August 5th. Can you squeeze that in real quick? Uh, yeah, you know, I, I'll, I'll honestly say it was maybe even more of his idea. I think he was actually the one who was like, well, you talked about it a year ago, so yeah, let's do it. I mean, my husband, yeah, he he's amazing. Um, I love you so much, Conrad. You're my best friend. So thank you for being my biggest supporter. Because uh, he's he's always, I always say my husband is always willing to be willing. So, uh, and I love that about him. Because Lord knows I got a lot of work to do in that arena personally. <laughs> so, That's really fun. Uh, I appreciate that, that he is that. Person. Sounds like you both are willing to be willing because you're willing to take on this big task. It's great to have somebody in your corner that supports you and uh, gives yeah. you that nudge and reminds you that, you know, you said you were going to do this a yep. couple of years ago. Oh, yeah. And he <laughs> is that person. He's so support. I mean, if I was like, babe, I think I'm going to come out with a hair dye line that makes you have leopard print hair, he'd be like, okay, well, if you research it and it seems good, then. You do that, honey. Great job. <laughs> That's quite an idea. I think you just I know. the winner. So I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> go find it, everybody. If you want a yeah. hairline, uh, color line that uh, colors your hair right. leopards. There you go. You never know. <laughs> you never know. 
I really appreciate you. Thank you so much. Uh, have a great day. I know, I know we will talk because you've also sparked about a million ideas of what else is possible for people who are coming to this area and are, you know, looking for homes or looking to relocate. Uh, as many of us as are, we're looking at other parts of the country to live in, there's lots of people really wanting to live here. So for those of you who are trying to get out of here, keep in mind, there's yeah. a lot of people <laughs> who would love to live here. Yeah. Um, thank you so much, Janelle. Have a wonderful thank day. You. I look forward to connecting with you in the future. You as well. Thank you so much.